it's all about the PlayStation 5 right now. That's what I'm discovering. It's a lot of interest. A uh, surprising amount? Maybe for me. I don't know. I just... It seemed for a while, like the console thing... I remember there were talks of possibly the previous generation being the last generation of big consoles. Mm. And then somehow now, just based on what I'm seeing around the web, it seems to me the console is... It's still here, and it's getting interest from people, big time. Maybe more than I expected, or maybe this is just a consequence of the fact that they don't happen all that often. We're talking about 2013, the previous generation consoles. But I'm seeing PS5 articles pop up about every little which way. Every little dimension, every little uh, price leak, and people are just hyped up. Mm-hmm. Maybe people just need something to be hyped up about. I don't know. Yeah. But it's at the top of my uh, Google technology news almost, well, the last few days, I'll tell you what, has been PlayStation 5. And today, it's no different. Today, we have a a picture of a giant PS5 that was circulating on social media, which turns out to be fake. But in fact, the author was never claiming that it wasn't. He was attempting to give users... Humans, people, an idea of what to expect with the upcoming console and how it would compare in scale to previous consoles. And so in order to do so, you mocked up an image. And if you scroll down, you'll see the actual the image in question. You can click on it there. It came from Dreamcast Guy. And of course, this article here posted on Forbes, citing the original post. And this place is a digital not digital, a a render. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? I mean, a Photoshop, really. Yeah, it's a render. Okay, render. It's 3D. Call it render. This is, of course, so so you have the PlayStation 5 rendered in there next to, I believe that's an Xbox One S? Is that the S? I mean, that's a tiny Xbox. I don't know which version it is. It's one of the smaller, more recent Xboxes. And then, of course, also a Nintendo Switch a light next to that. Mm. That's a light one, right? Um, yes. That's why we keep you around it here, It doesn't Will. have the removable... Yeah, you got to identify Nintendo Switches for us. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Designated job. Anyway, the PlayStation looks huge here. It looks like a gaming PC. A sort of yeah. form factor. Now, people immediately looked at this image. They said the shadows are wrong and... Maybe the aspect or the the perspective might be off to making this thing look uh, bigger than it is. But if you go back to the original article, uh, the Forbes article there, you'll notice that this isn't the only image floating around indicating that this will be a huge system. And as you scroll down to the comparison chart that another user on Twitter posted, David Heaney, or Henny, this also makes puts the PS5 at the largest as the largest of the group by a fair margin, even bigger than the Fat Boy PS3. You remember that thing? Mm-hmm. That thing was a that was a tank. Mm-hmm. That thing right there. Is that the air conditioner just turned on? Yes. Hey Vin, could you hit the air conditioner for us? You turn it off on a dial over there. The one by the bathroom, the thermostat there. So the Xbox S. X, S, X, S, X. Try to say that. Sheesh. No, no. That one is going to be probably the biggest in volume of all the Xboxes, but because they made it fatter in multiple directions on this chart, it's not necessarily representative of the overall volume of the device, Mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying here. But the PS5, it's just towering. It's like the, I've seen the memes comparing it to the Burj... In Dubai? Yeah, what? Building? what's the, the tallest building in Dubai? What's the name of it? Isn't it called the Burj? Ka- Khalifa? Burj no. Khalifa? <laughs> Am Khalifa? I making up names right now, Will? That's what we're, what you're here for. We need a quick Google on this. Oh, is it the, just the Burj Dubai? Or is that a, That's actually, I think, a different building in Dubai. There's many tall buildings in Dubai, obviously. The Burj Khalifa is the biggest one. Anyway, so I saw people comparing it to that, and it certainly is a towering type of device. 
I talked previously about the digital only version. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that actually in this episode. No, I'm not. But I talked previously about how I'm probably more interested in the digital only version, which will shrink it, make it a little bit more slender. But nonetheless, this thing's going to be a bit of a beast in console terms. And some have suggested that because of it, there will be possibly a quicker progression towards a slim model as some of the components shrink in scale and people want to put something smaller under or near their TV. Because, like I said, this thing is going to tower over whatever you've seen in the past. And, oh, it's important to note, though, Will, none of this is official. All right, so everything you just looked at, it's not official. Mm -hmm. What it is is based on, and these are very talented people, might I add, people doing these Photoshop works and whatnot. And you would know this because you're in there yourself every so often. Mm -hmm. It was based on people taking the measurements of a standard disk drive and a USB port and the things that they had access to from the official press images. The and controller then, as The well. controller and then scaling from there. Tough business, man. And because there's no physical events happening in 2020, there's no reference points that actually exist out there. The only reference points you have are in the press images and the press images don't put the device against any other device. So you're just left guessing. Mm -hmm. Maybe Sony doesn't mind it though, if it's actually that huge. Maybe Sony's sitting there thinking, perfect. You order it up off Amazon, you pre-order it. Speaking of Amazon, by the way, the beyond some of the leaked specs relating to the weight of the thing, prices also were on that post. Amazon France putting it at 500 euros for anyone curious about the up the, the price, the potential price of the upcoming PlayStation 5. And of course, you'll save a little bit of money, presumably on the digital version. But Will just did, I mean, he's running quick conversions over here. That's 560 US dollars. But who knows if it'll be a one to one mm -hmm. conversion. Sometimes people in certain parts of the world end up paying more for whatever reason, cost of doing business in those places or just purchasing. I don't, economics. Mm -hmm. Economics. <laughs> our next podcast will we're gonna have a, a sister podcast to this one and uh we're gonna switch seats oh. and you're gonna sit here oh. and the topic is economics all right and business yeah so are you ready for that i'm just waving a laser pointer around <laughs> just hitting a whiteboard with a laser pointer and nothing else on it i'd i'd, I'd watch and listen to that oh, okay well, I can't speak for everyone else, but I'm sure they would too. Right. I think I just spoke for them. Speaking of the PS5, though, you see, that's a better segue. We're, get, we're getting the hang of this. Yeah. I love reading news like this. I don't play that many video games, but when I do, I don't want to wait because I got to carve out time, man. You know, time. Running out of it. Mm. You know, being a human, you're running out of time all the time. Always. Every, every day. Mm-hmm. Make it count. Make it worth it. Uh, no redos on time. You redo a lot of things in life, not time. I mean, unless you're uh, Michael J. Fox on, in the, in the Back to the Future, he gets yeah, the redo. You got to get a time machine. He gets the redo. But all, all the rest of us, you can make change to a lot of things. Like, you can make change to your physique like you've been doing. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you noticing. <laughs> No, I didn't actually vend it, and then I'm just hopping on board with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can make change to a lot of things. You make change to, uh, or you could paint. You could change the paint color in your house. Mm -hmm. you do that. Yes, you can. Uh, you could change what you eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. So lots of fun stuff there, but you can't change the amount of time on your clock, sir. Yeah, that's always the constant. So I don't think anybody wants to spend the time on their clock waiting for loading screens. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Maybe there's... Wow, what a segue. There's probably YouTube channels dedicated to the best loading screens and probably a whole community of people that are angry right now saying, I live for the loading screen. Mm -hmm. But it's not me. And I don't think it's you. And apparently there's an interview that took place. Developer... It's a game coming out, Horizon Forbidden West. How about that name for a game? And the game director has confirmed a tidbit in which he states 
that the uber-fast SSD drive inside of the PlayStation 5 will result in virtually no loading screens. Mm. It's a heck of a claim. Mm -hmm. Virtually no loading screens. I mean, he's speaking probably... It's for their game. Right? Yeah, in relationship to him. But he's saying he's got an open world game, Horizon Forbidden West. You can open the map, fast travel from one end to the other, restart from any checkpoint, super fast, no loading screen. I mean, it sounds like a pretty heavy game. I don't know. It is, yeah. Oh, okay. The first one, at least. So was... so you would assume that on a, in a heavy title like that, if they can achieve no loading screens, then presumably you'll see it elsewhere as well. Based on... Uh, the uh, SSD being there. Yeah. It's actually kind of surprising it's taking this long for SSD technology to get into the console. Mm -hmm. Kind of surprising, really. Mm -hmm. Of course, now the whole focus shifts to, particularly with the digital-only version, bandwidth to get the software in the first place. But after you get over that hurdle, it's nice to know you jump straight into the game and you're not staring at the loading screens. I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Yeah, that's great. But we'll have to wait and see uh, how that maps out for the other titles. This title is targeting a 2021 release date, and it will feature a larger, denser map than its predecessor, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is the one you're talking about, mm -hmm. I presume. Did you get a chance to play this game that I'm speaking of? I played uh, halfway through. It was very difficult. I uh, screwed up many times, but oh, nice. a great game. Nice. I don't, uh, yeah, I need to finish it. I don't mind a difficult game. If I'm going to play a game, I don't mind the challenge. Mm -hmm. I don't need it to be easy. Yeah. It's very, very uh, robust. Mm -hmm. I like robust. Upgrades and secrets. Oh. A lot of side missions. Side missions. Yeah, they get you. Man, side missions. Yeah, it's a very long game. So do you... At some point, you get you, you you have a reference point of how much you haven't achieved yet. Yes. Like you're constantly you look at your mini map, and yeah. it's just tons of uh, like you've done one one percent of the game, yeah. but you've been playing for. Yeah. I hear you, man. I think people can relate. Mm -hmm. So you got to dive back in. You got to try out the new one over here. No loading screens. Anything? Yeah. More time yeah, for your that's side. That's really mission. half the time. More time for your side screens. mission. Rivals have chipped away at Apple's smartwatch dominance in Q1. We're back on the Motley Fool, Will, because remember we talked about you're an expert over here. Mm. What does that mean? Financial. What do you think it means? The well, it's a, I guess it's a play. Oh, I don't know, actually. I'm not even going to go on record. I, I'm, I'm completely okay. unsure of what that means. Uh, well, now we have to. We can't leave no. it like that. We can't. <laughs> Motley... Fool, define. So, the definition of motley fool: a professional clown employed to entertain a king or nobleman in the Middle Ages. So, essentially, a jester. Okay. Interesting. Does that make you look at the site differently? Mm, in a way, yeah. Is it like a joke news site, like the Onion or something? No, not at all. It's a financial. Wall Street type yeah. of site. It's memorable, I would say. Yeah. Well, the, you can see actually their uh, logo there is a jester. Mm -hmm. hmm. Maybe it's some sort of a statement or comment on the financial markets in general. It's all a, reporting on it's all a ruse. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But they're having fun with it. Yeah. Anyway, point being, it's a well-known, established brand in this type of reporting, and they follow very closely. Here we have an article from Evan New. Is that how I should pronounce that? You? I think so. AirPods may have cannibalized Apple Watch sales. Well, other smartwatch makers have also chipped away at Apple's dominance. I didn't... It seemed like the Apple Watch was the only smartwatch you would encounter for a really long period of time. And Samsung kept pumping out the Galaxy products. Obviously, Huawei's put out the GT stuff. But it just, n nothing close to the Apple Watch from a footprint perspective, what I see in public, what I see in the regular daily life. But maybe everybody already got their Apple Watches and they're happy with them. You're bringing up, I see the, oh, the Moto 360. I remember the event I went to. 
in Chicago when they launched that, I believe is where I was with the round face and Android Wear didn't really take off. Then you had the luxury ones and Fossil put one out. Tag did one. I remember hearing about another luxury one recently. Was it, who's a famous watchmaker? Charge you a boatload of cash. Some luxury company. It was like 5,000 bucks. It doesn't matter. Rolex? <laughs> it wasn't Rolex. It was like a Rolex. It was in the same similar uh, category to Rolex. But they're all having to build their stuff on top of Android Wear, obviously. Mm -hmm. Apple's not going to let you do your own Apple Watch. Right. Uh, so anyway, up until this point, uh, the Apple Watch has been the most successful by far. It still is, by the way, but they're giving up some ground to other players. And this comes from a recent report via... What is that company's name that does these amazing reports? Canalys. Canalys. Uh, shout out to them because I've missed their name in the past and they're responsible for putting together this data. And, and they, they keep you, they're keeping us tuned in to what's happening in the markets in general. So Huawei grew by a lot. Year-over-year year growth, 113%. They bounced back. Uh, a lot of that success in the domestic, their domestic market inside of China. Chinese customers are getting more smartwatches and not necessarily choosing Apple. Samsung also grew 46%. So they're moving more Galaxy watch products. Garmin grew themselves. Fitbit shrank and Apple shrank. We're I guess we're talking about market share. Still though, of all the shipments, Apple was by far the biggest player at 5.2 million units Q1 2020. Now, obviously a lot of things have happened Q1 2020 that could impact this right here, these numbers right here. But I think it's significant. It's significant to me because the Apple ecosystem is sort of unique. It's not always indicative of everything that's happening in the tech market. In other words, the the there is some sort of a a feeling that when you're within the Apple ecosystem that you want to own all the little pieces to make you a full, a whole person. Do you know what I'm saying here? It seems so easy. You got the iPhone. The integration is so tight right. between the devices that it feels you're getting the most by having all the things. And of course, Apple loves that. Mm -hmm. It means you're buying more things. And it makes sense that they're also saying that they think possibly AirPods and the popularity of AirPods bit into people's potential purchasing of the watch because they're like, I can only get one of these accessories and I'd rather have the AirPods. But when you start to see the adoption across other brands who don't have the same amount of strength in their own branded ecosystem, and I don't think that that's much of a surprise to anyone that we would say Huawei doesn't quite have it and Samsung doesn't quite have it to the same degree because they're both built on Android up until this point. Mm -hmm. So when we see growth in those players, it maybe it means the global adoption of smart watches in general is actually finally starting to take off a little bit. I don't want to say take off. It's not massive growth, but people are starting to adopt it a little more. You throw in companies like Garmin. I think Kirk's wearing a Garmin. I have a Polar watch, which is sort of semi-smart. And yeah, maybe, maybe the embrace is taking place. Mm -hmm. Now, the other interesting one on this chart, Fitbit, diving off a cliff. Ah, uh, they're in the process of getting acquired by Alphabet, Google, who knows what they're going to do with it to maybe turn it around. But Fitbit was, they were big time for a long time in the wearables and they are having trouble obviously keeping up, keeping at the same pace as some of these other players. Because ultimately with these devices, kind of like your smartphone, you're not going to own multiples. It's, it's a, it's a one-time deal. If you got the Fitbit tracker, you're not having the other yeah. one. And vice versa, if you got the Apple Watch, you're not going to be throwing a Fitbit next to it. Unless you're like some crazy fitness person. you got to have access to all the apps and variations. I know you wore a Fitbit for five minutes, ten. Yeah, to track my sleep. And I figured it was good, so I don't use it anymore. I know, it's so easy not <laughs> to use these wearables. It's just the charging, to be honest. I know. I complained about that back in the day. People got mad at me. They said, well, you can't charge something? But I agree, which is one of the reasons I gravitate towards this semi-smartwatch from Polar. It's the Vantage. I charge it like once a week, maybe. And that's, it's not so much that I avoid doing it so often that it's a, it also charges really fast. So if I do forget to charge it, 
like I did this morning, for example, it was a little low on battery. I just put it on there for, I don't know, maybe it was 10 minutes and it was already 25% battery, which will easily get you a day or two more days. Mm -hmm. It could do a week on a full charge for me. I don't, I have a, I don't even know if they still make this one. This was the Vantage V, I think, not the M. And I'm not sure if they still make it, but, oh, they do. Okay, there it is. Yeah, this was the Vantage V, but they put out other stuff since then. It's not cheap. It's not a cheap watch. And I totally barely scratched the surface on its functionality because I'm not mapping runs or anything like that. Every so often I go on the bike, things like this. But more importantly, I like the design of it. It's, it's fairly rugged compared to some of the uh, more elegant smartwatch approaches. Has a really good heart rate monitor and the battery lasts a really long time. Mm. And I don't even have notifications turned on because I don't really want notifications on my wrist. So anyway, nonetheless, they're not on this chart. I wonder where they uh, fit in, but Garmin is a real competitor for them on the fitness side. Anyway, Apple giving up a little bit of ground to the likes of Huawei, Samsung, in the smartwatch department. Here's an interesting one. I Obviously, this is not our uh, core area of expertise, reporting on the, the health sector, but this is just such a big topic at the moment with the virus going around that I just, uh, I just found it to be interesting from a scientific perspective. Apparently, your blood type could play a really big part in how your body deals with this virus if you are to acquire it. Uh, blood type O. Those that have blood type O are far less likely to have severe, a severe di disease than those with other blood types, particularly the worst uh, type A blood. And it's an early study out of Europe. And so, the, the, you know, the scientific community, they want to see it replicated many times before they're willing to say, hey, this is certain. But it seems to be fairly well received by that community. They're saying this is an interesting finding and worth further investigation. The evidence of a role for blood type is tentative, it isn't enough of a signal to be sure. However, the study involving scientists in Italy, Spain, Denmark, Germany, and other countries compared 2,000 patients that had severe infection or severe virus, version of the virus, to several thousand other people who were healthy or who had mild to no symptoms also infected. Researchers tied variations in six genes to the likelihood of severe disease including some that could have a role in how vulnerable people are to the virus. This is actually not completely new, by the way. They found similar correlations back in the SARS days as well. Mm. So there's something going on with the blood will. I expect you to get to the bottom of it, drop everything right now, and start contributing to the real study here. Save some people. Mm. Obviously, I'm joking. We're completely unqualified, but... Uh, maybe this is an indication that we can, if once you have this type of data, any data, any, 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 any kind of signal that gives you an area to begin to investigate, it's not just about telling people, Hey, if you're this uh, blood type, you might want to chill. It's not mm -hmm. just about that. It's also to say, what are the attributes of the individual with these genes and with this blood type? What are the attributes that makes them more resistant or have a less severe version of the virus if they happen to acquire it because then maybe you can sort of reverse engineer those attributes or i i don't know obviously mm -hmm. telling you out, out of the league here but it's a cool finding nonetheless and maybe a little bit of a, uh, hope optimism information is finally being extracted about this mysterious novel thing mm -hmm. but anyways i i immediately tried to figure out what my blood type was i went looking online for an old blood test but then they only keep it in their database for 30 days. So I couldn't even bring it up. Do you know what blood type you are? Um, not the top of my head. I'll no. ask my mom. Um, ask your mom. Yeah, she would know. She's a nurse. She would remember. Oh, she would just stuff. remember your blood type? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I'm curious. We're going to find out after this and see, who, see what's what and who's who. Yeah. But I don't, you know what? We should look up real quick the most common ones. Because I, there's one universal donor. There's some of them are more rare than others. Oh, there you go. Ah, so it's almost a clean split A and O. O positive 38%, O negative 7, A positive 34. It's almost a 50-50 split O and A. And then the other ones are far more rare. 
Interesting. The plot thickens. Of course, this comes to that uh, previous discussion you and I were having about the super spreaders, and maybe there's a correlation there as well. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah, this is your this is your health update for the day. Uh, next up, this one is cool. We got a little a little space news for you. <laughs> Group of scientists came together and they attempted to they attempted to project predict based on evidence and data. They attempted to come up with a number. Uh, 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 um, Ah, uh, project. What? What's the word I want here? A predict. No, I don't want that. Anyway, they determined to their best, their best guess estimate. Maybe I wanted estimate. <laughs> they wanted to estimate. Right. Their best guess is that there are thirty-six communicating intelligent alien civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. 36, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I just love this article because it's so specific. Yeah. We got Kirk's attention with this one. 36, exactly. Humans have long suspected that we are not alone in the universe, and now scientists have said there may be dozens of alien civilizations lurking not too far from Earth. According to a study in the Astrophysical Journal, this story is on CBS, but then they're reposting the Astrophysical Journal. Scientists at the University of Nottingham estimate that there is a minimum, a minimum of 36 communicating intelligent alien civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. They say the estimate is actually conservative. It's based on the assumption that intelligent life forms on other planets in a similar way to how it does on Earth, using what they call the astrobiological Copernican limit. So this is a kind of similar to evolution on, on the planet, on our planet. They're applying a, a similar idea or investigation into an evolutionary analysis of our galaxy. And this is something people have been trying, they, they scientists have been trying to do for a long time, but they've got some new information and some new data points that have led them to this particular 36 number. Mm. In the past, the estimates were far more wide ranging I believe uh, this was a funny one. The Drake equation, which was the first uh, a previous calculation of alien life elsewhere, estimated there would likely be between zero to a few billion civilizations. Mm. So they've gotten closer. Now they say between four and 211 capable of communicating with others. They actually believe uh, that, that they could be at a similar stage to us as well sending out radio signals and and so on how does this make you feel will i don't know it's cool yeah it honestly is cool are you buying it or are you skeptical is everything a conspiracy are you hearing the illuminati song in your head i would like to uh meet these alien races so 36 i'm up for alien 36 i don't think they want to visit us right now we're kind of a mess not right now yeah we're kind of a mess it's like it's like the equivalent you're if you're about to have an important guest to your house and the place is just a disaster. We gotta we gotta clean some things up first. Yeah. <laughs> poop on the carpet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dinner's the premises the premises is a little off right now. People, yeah. Is uh, um. Just uh, wait wait a year. You think yeah. one year is good enough? Yeah, I don't know, start, man. Things will start. I don't know. Back. People are talking about the second wave of it, and I don't, I don't know, man. Who knows? But anyway, who? Maybe they'll invite us over. Sure. Maybe you know. they'll invite us over. Elon can build us a, a rocket, a, a rocket for each person. Yeah. We go visit their house. It's pristine. Then we can mess that one up. <laughs> 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 Although, what reason do we have to believe that their premises is pristine? Maybe yeah, it's like, maybe they have problems. Maybe it's identical. Maybe, even worse. maybe it's identical. Yeah. Interesting. One to one. Interesting. Thirty six alien, alien civilizations communicating capable alien civilizations in our galaxy. Will I knew I know you always wondered about that number, so I'm just glad we Good. narrowed it down. Yeah. Thirty six. Uh, 
looked at the trending page. I looked at the trending page on YouTube. And at the top, there were two videos, two Fortnite videos at the top of trending. Number one and number two. Actually, this one moved to number two now. I think this was number one when I clicked on it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, we have a new number one. Charlie D'Amelio has taken over. It's not even her page. Oh, She's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She doesn't title. have to yeah. be. Yeah. Her title and, you know. You have thumbnail. to get, you just get her name in the title and you're going straight to the top at the moment. Uh, no, the, the Fortnite one caught my attention because it's just been, I heard some crazy numbers coming up about Fortnite. Uh, some of the streams when they were doing whatever's been going on. In They're Fort still kicking it. I don't know what's going on in Fortnite. I'm going to be completely honest with you. People are still playing it. Stuff is still happening. It's still very colorful. It's a whole it's a whole universe now. I'm going to be honest with you guys. After the initial hype had faded, I I faded with it. I just stopped really paying attention to it. But I know in the gaming community it still is hanging around. It's it's still g uh, gathering audiences and so you know people are going to keep playing it if people want to watch it and the whole package deal. And it's just become you used the word earlier robust. This is one of those situations where the longer a thing hangs around, the more entrenched it becomes in the popular culture. Yeah. It's now chapter two, season three, and it feels like it's here to stay, at least for a bit. It's really cemented itself. Cement. Gaming in general. Cement. And pop culture. Cement. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I like that. Cement. Fortnite cement. You don't get a lot of that in gaming. Or in the game. You'll get wood or steel. I don't think you get cement. No, you don't. I apologize for that. Deeply. Anyway, yeah. So I was like, now is the time. You got two on the top trending. You have Battle Pass gameplay trailer and Splash Down launch trailer. Uploaded both one day ago, 6.4 million views, 6.3 million views. Uploaded on the main Fortnite channel. Big numbers, Will. Mm -hmm. Big numbers. So the one that I end up watching is the gameplay trailer. So you can click on that one for a moment. And man, the colors and the aesthetic of the whole thing. So pleasing. It's like... It's almost at this point like the guns don't fit in at all or make any sense. It's so happy looking. Why are there anyone shooting each other? <laughs> Do you know what I'm getting at here? Yeah. The aesthetic of, I yeah. mean, it was always really colorful, but it's so far now from resembling conflict. Like killing? It just doesn't, it, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I, I'm definitely crazy as well, but he's riding a shark and <laughs> it's it's almost like the shooting and the, the 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 killing mechanic is shrinking in importance. If you just look at this trailer, yep. there, there is shooting. They're they're definitely fighting, but it's a lot of the other pieces as well. I know they talk about the new vehicles. They talk about obviously they show that shark a number of times. The characters, the skins. And it's because of the way that these these the revenue is generated in here by getting your own personalized. I think what I'm trying to get at, Will, hear me out. If you'll give me a chance to just try to articulate something, it could go terribly wrong. I feel that Fortnite is now and has been, but has cemented itself. <laughs> It's a social network. It's just a social network. You hang out there. Your friends are there. Your different looks and outfits are there. There's always something new. Concerts are there. I mean, how many of those big-time concerts took place? It is your default operating place for a group that's that's into it and remains into it. I don't know what their daily active users is, is like, but for you and I, it might be YouTube or... 
Twitter or wherever we, we spend our time, this is kind of, now granted here, they're taking money from you left, right, and center. Mm. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's a premium social network. But it's, and, and, and I'm taking nothing away from those that play it competitively and have the skills and, and, and are maybe excited about this Battle Pass stuff but have other, another agenda within it. I'm talking about the typical user who gets excited by this, puts their credit card down, wants all the colors, all the characters. Look at the affiliations. They got Aquaman now. It's the type of collabs that they're doing. They had the Travis Scott. They're making the big social connections, cultural, pop cultural connections. Those are hard things to do, man. Mm -hmm. And you have to have this alternative agenda. And I'm not saying it's a negative. I'm just saying another agenda beyond the game itself has to branch, has to be bigger than any game to keep it going. It can't just be shooting. It can't just be building. Now we're talking ecosystem. We're talking socializing we're talking a a type of software you log i I guess this has happened previously obviously you had the warcraft stuff going on Mm -hmm. world of warcraft people embedded in that dave 2d was addicted to that told me a whole story about it he he came up twice now in this show we should get him back on dave 2d if you're watching come uh for a visit i think we're allowed to visit now maybe not maybe we'll put him on the tv over there uh It's happened, it continues to happen. It's just the tools have gotten better, more colorful, more engaging, the sound effects, the reward structures. It's we're at a high level right now. And Battle Pass Chapter 2 Season 3 is sort of the peak of that entire slot machine social gaming thing. Mm -hmm. Look at that page. My goodness. They almost got me back. I'm just looking at it. Never saw something so colorful in my entire life. They rope you in with the uh, the color. I'm just buying skins. Sound effects. Got the full skin inventory, and I don't kill a single you're, person. I'm just getting Aquaman. crushed every single time. I'm Aquaman. I wonder, getting a deal done like that must be just insane. Trying to get, because you got to, who, who has Aquaman? Marvel and the likeness of the actor. He probably has to sign off on it. His agent and lawyers. Oh, God. See, when you just pick up the game, you don't think about all of it. I can't help it. I just think of the mechanics. Can't help it. Anyway, they have it. Double trending. Number two and three right now. Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 3. You guys let me know. I don't know. You play the stuff you know better than I do. I'm the old guy. I'm willing to admit it. I'm the... I'm sitting back here. You know, I'm the wise... I'm the old... I sip the... That's fine by me. I'll be a splinter. I'll be splinter. Is You're it? the wise one? Yeah, I'll just be Splinter. Uh, Chilling. Does he get killed? Can't remember. No, he almost does. No, he does. Splinter gets killed, right? By Shredder? Yeah, they got to avenge his death. Splinter! Vin! Vin! Does Splinter get killed in Ninja Turtles? Number two? He gets beat up in one. All right, anyway. He dies at some point or something. Shredder stabs Splinter in the back, literally, at the end of the battle. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's a big... So, man, what, what kind of can of worms did I just open? Anyway, whatever. I'm, I'm going to be Splinter, but not dead. Or Yoda, or something like that. I'm fine to look from a distance and speak strictly. That's where I'm going. Eventually, it's just... Lou Yoda? Yes. Loda? Yes. It's just philosophical. You're going to be wondering what I'm talking about. You're going to be sitting over there saying, what did he just, does that make, I'll just be trying to spin words around. and Splinter. That's my childhood right there. What was his, the origin story? He's the little rat. He's in the cage. My God, we're so deep right now. We're so deep in it. Splinter looks really cool right there, though. I'll give you that. Anyway, if for all you youngsters out there, you have no idea, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, big part of childhood, all right? Give me a break. Anyway, that's good. You can cut it there, Will. 